Hello everybody and welcome to the presentation of Cirrus.ag. Uh, the site is called Cirrus.ag up there in the actual address or URL window. But this Cirrus Web is what we're going to be referring to this as. So when you go to the Cirrus.ag site, as I'm highlighting right there, you'll get this page and you'll sign in with your AgX account. And as you sign in with your credentials, and I've already put in my username and password, I would allow that and it will download everything into the app itself. Now it first goes to Houston because that's where the VPN is set to as far as where that goes, but yours will go to wherever that's located at. First thing I would show you is that up here in the top right corner you're logged in under the account that you're currently under and in the settings option window these are all the settings of course that, that are the default and you can come in here and change any of this at any point in time. You can go into the Manage AgX account that will take you to the page that many of you are familiar with where you can set up relationships, AgX Sync accounts with other people that also have AgX accounts and share data and so forth. So that's an option for you to be able to go to that directly to that location out of the Cirrus Web app. I'm going to come over here and go back to the grower and on the grower itself if I come down here and look at the growers on the drop down list you'll notice that there's a manage growers option and if I click on that, that's going to show me all of my growers that I've got up in my AgX account. And just like in Summit and just like in Cirrus Mobile, you can select to download only the growers that you want. The, the cool thing here is, is that when you have selected and set this up the very first run through, and you turn some more back on or off, it, it's automatic. It, it just, it's already there. It doesn't have to take the time to download or upload. The data is already there. The growers, farms, and fields are already there and you don't have to sit there and find any of that. So if I turn on, let's say, Waits and Ted Swenson here and hit Close, they're just going to show up. And if I go down to the list here, down to the very bottom, you'll notice Waits pops back into the view. So it's very quick and simple to get growers, farms, and fields turned on or off. But you certainly would set that up with the growers, farms, field list for what you're going to work with currently. Then I'm going to come over here to the Home button and just click on the Dashboard. And the Dashboard is going to show me all the layers I have for all the growers, farms, and fields that I have. Now, one of the first things I would show you is I'll come in here and I'll select a grower. And let's say I select this Allen Family Farms. And under Allen Family Farms, I've got all these different fields that belong to it. I could pick a farm, pick fields, but I'm going to stay up at the farm level. And the reason being, I just clicked over here in the view to dismiss that window. And the reason I'm going to do this is because I'm going to come down here in the plus sign or the add button in the lower left corner and you have the option to record your planting information, your crop protection fertilizer, your tillage, as well as create boundaries, new boundaries, and so forth. I'm going to go through each one of these, but I'm first going to elect to uh, select the planting operation. And because I'm at the farm level, you'll notice that there's eight fields, and of course nothing's selected as yet. But if I come down through here and I say, okay, on this, on this particular field, on the Allen Home Place, the Brittle Home, Brittle North and Southfield, you'll notice as I select them, I'm clicking on them, and I'm going to zoom out just a little bit, those fields are highlighted in the view in orange. So on those particular four fields, I know that I've planted a particular crop or I'm going to plant a particular crop as a recommendation. So I make my short list out of all the master list here, and everything that's in that orange line and above, that's your short list. So if I hit this add to short list column option, you'll notice those are all turned on to my short list. And if I come down here and say, well, I also need to put tall fescue, and maybe I want to put field peas in there as well, when I hit done, that appends that to my short list. And if I run back up to the top again, you're going to notice that now those have been appended to your short list from the orange line up. That's your short list options. So if I come in here and I say, all right, on these particular fields, we're going to put soybeans. Well, I've just assigned soybeans to those four different fields right there, or to 385.67 acres. And now I can continue on filling all this out, pick my uh, seed company, pick the hybrids, the varieties, pick the purpose, and on down through here on the list on everything that would be appropriate for what it is that you're doing. And again, I have a short list set up with my seeds per acre. I could come up here and run to the right and fill out any information that I needed as far as the seed placement, the seed treatment, any of the planting equipment, as well as the back to the variety hybrid. You can also come in here to the general section and put any information regarding the operator, any of the information that's pertinent to who that person was that did the actual inputs or did the actual planting and so on. And as I go through that, there's six different options under general, I believe, 
soil conditions, the sensitive area, and if you fill any of this out, of course, it's going to be tied to that geography, to those boundaries on those 385.6 acres. The field weather, and on through the list on the equipment, health and safety, and then it kind of brings you back full circle to the general info. If I hit the plus sign over here, I can turn on and start to populate more data about the tillage or the crop protection and fertilizer. So if I select the crop protection and fertilizer, I can come down through and say, well, on those fields, we're going to go put some commercial fertilizer out and we're going to put some potash down and we're going to put a 240 pound rate and we're going to put that in pounds per acre and if I need to add more products I can come up here and hit the add product button and add more products in here as I scroll down I'll get my drop down list and I can say I'm also going to come down here and put down another fertilizer at some point in the season I'm going to put some dab down I'm going to put a 240 pound rate down and so on so you can continue to turn on uh, up to eight different, uh, eight separate commercial fertilizers, eight insecticides, eight fungicides, and it's the same functionality as what you have in the Cirrus Mobile and Summit apps. So once I get everything associated for what I want on those 385 acres, I'm going to apply that. Now you'll notice it turns colorized over here on those fields from gray to the colors representing what it is that you have in there. And it also shows you the number of databases of information with the color code based upon green for planting and the blue for the particular crop protection and fertilizer. And anything you filled out beyond that would be uh, correlated to that particular color. So now I'm going to come over here and pick my other fields. And if I drop down through here and say, okay, these other fields on these other farms, I want every one of these selected. And now I've got 486 acres, and if I go back to my planting database, I'm going to come in here and say on those acres we're going to plant corn and fill out all the pertinent information for what it is you're going to work with. And if I come in here and pick whatever the company it is I'm working with, pick whatever the varieties, the hybrids are, pick the purpose, pick the seeding rates, and then once I get all that filled out, I'll come over here and I'll select my appropriate information I want out of the drop downs and again you could do the same thing on the seed placement database, the seed treatment database, the planting equipment database back to the variety hybrid and if I go to the crop protection and fertilizer I can fill that information out as well on all the specifics of what I want to incorporate as far as the crop protection and fertilizer there again general you have those six different options for entering that information and saving that to those areas and then if I go to my plus sign, of course I only have the tillage left. So if I do click tillage and I want to incorporate that, then I've got my options for being able to incorporate any information on those fields as far as what it is I've done on the tillage side of things. Once I get all that information then um, associated, I'm going to apply all of that and that's going to associate that or uh, assign that now to every one of those acres. So now I've got my entire farm uh, set up with my planting, crop protection, fertilizer, tillage and general information that uh, for which I want to incorporate for my record keeping and I would come down here and hit the save button. Now if I hit save right now I'm saving it for all eight fields and you can tie it to the season that you want to or you can come up here but you can tie it to the season that you want to which would be tied to the season for all the fields and the dates as well but if I go to save per single field you could run down through here and save this individually per each one of these fields the brittle home versus the Brill North for different dates and times for when you expected to do that or maybe when you had done that in the past. So you can do that either all at once or individualized. So if I do this for 2019 and I set it up as a recommendation because I want to send that out, I want to make sure that I set my to and from dates here to where I'm far enough out that it's not going to cause me any issues as far as uh, not being able to be available. I know you don't plan in July, but you're going to push that out to some, some date and time uh, that's going to be appropriate for what you're going to be working with. And then any notes that you might want to put in there. So we'll just say it's going to be uh, weather patterns show to have adequate moisture. And save all of that. Once you save that, that's going to save those as layers of data to that particular set of acres, and then we'll have those showing up here in the dashboard. So if I go back to the dashboard now, and I'm just highlighting that to update everything, and if I come to this wind tower field, 
and click on that. That shows me the information if I go through that for that particular layer of data for everything what I told it that I wanted to do. The seed company, variety hybrid, and whatever other information that I would have that would be associated, assigned, and saved to that particular field at that time. If I drop back down here to the activities, that's going to give me all the other layers of the activities that I can go in and look at and view as well. The other option to look at here is the plus sign or the add button and come down here and look at this uh, option down here in the bottom. And this allows you to come in here and, uh, and notice that I was at the, the farm level. But if I come in here and click on a field, anything in the blue, of course, is already uh, a part of the system. Uh, anything that you would show up as white, if you're going to add a boundary in, the white indicates that number one, you have a common field boundary. The first option is, is it's going to show common field boundaries that's in the same company, but it, but not on your AgX account, but it's in the company under the umbrella of your company for all the other AgX accounts. So you can choose to choose you can choose to elect to use that common field boundary, which we would always tell you 100% of the time to do. And if there's not a common field boundary or what we refer to as a CFB, then we'll pull up the COUs or the common land units that's available through the FSA office for those locations. So if I elect that I want to use this particular field right here, and I can edit this even after the fact, but I can select that, and that's going to pull that in, showing the acres now, in this case at 155.34, and then I can come in here and further do any, anything that I might want to do to clean up this field. So if I click on here and I save this, I'm going to tie this to my grower, my farm, and my field. In this case, I'm going to tie this to the Allen Family Farms, tie it to the Riddle Farm, and I'm just going to call this my F8 and save that. So I've got F8 in the system now, but then I realized that I had an issue with it that I needed to clean something up on that. So I'm going to come up here and go down to the field level. To make an edit to a field boundary, if and when that case may come into play, you can come up here, you can go, do this at essentially any level, but I'm at the farm level right now, and I've got my field showing up in the view, and the latest one I added in was this one. So you'll notice it's in the orange, and if I click, indicating that it's in the system, so if I click on that for details, it's going to give me the information about the, the rainfall and the name of the grower farm field amount of acres, but you get the edit field option. And if I click on the edit field, this is going to pop up and throw me into edit mode, and I can come in here and make any changes what I might need to. So if I zoom in here a little bit, and maybe we didn't drive this out far enough, then I could take my split tool and come in here and start inside the waterway and continue on around that waterway, clicking just like you're used to in our other programs. And when I finish, I could come back inside that waterway to finish that particular split, or that digitize. And then in this case, I want to select that area, and I want to delete that because that's non-cultivated acres. And I could do the same down here. So if I come in here, I can, I can left mouse click and drag this around. And if I've got an internal polygon, I can also select the draw option, go around that area that may be a pond or a grove of trees or a rock outcropping or whatever the case may be, double click that, and it's going to ask you whether that area is cultivated or is going to have area and acres tied to it or if it's not. And if I said no, if it's never been farmed or cultivated and it's not today and it won't be in the future, then I'm going to say no to that, and that clips that out, and it reduces your acres down from the 155 down to 150.2. So you have the options to be able to do that, just the same as in, in Cirrus Mobile as, as well as in Summit. But if you also come back in here in a few years' time, just to show you, you can turn that back in. So let's play this scenario out like that was a grove of trees. You had dozed around those trees, cleaned all that out, burned it off, and now you're farming that entire area. So I'm taking the draw tool, going back around it, and that reverts that back to cultivated acres. Then I'm going to zoom out a ways here because I want to incorporate that back in with the rest of the field. So I click the rest of the bigger portion of the field around that, and I'm going to union all that together back into one. So I could take that all the way forward or all the way backwards. Now what's powerful about this new model is, is that you have this button down here that you can reverse your way all the way back out. So we remember everything uh, that you've done in the system up to that point in time, and you can go forward and you can clear all. I mean, it's really nice in order to be able to, to push yourself back and forth. So once you would have any information in there that you may have made a mistake on, you can back yourself out, go forward, and so on. So once you make the changes, if you had any changes to it, save that, 
and that's going to save that for that particular field boundary for the edits that you had made. For today, that covers today's date being 7-12 of 2019. This covers the functionality that we have as current. And as things come on new, I'll have more of these videos coming out to people. But thank you for listening. Have a great day. And thanks again.